So the way that I'm going to segue into the certified Angus beef, just sending us all the meat, um, but they're not, the cattle is not here, but the place we're going to sell certified Angus beef, the bulls, in order for them to breed their cows. They are cow pimps. <laughs> <laughs> Valley, you know, it's a special place and a beautiful, uh, beautiful fall morning. Regions are defined by their food and beverages. Doesn't matter where you're from. I mean, Tuscany, for example, when you have a glass of Chianti, you, you know they made that wine to go with the foods of the region. When you're cooking, you're cooking to, to go with the wines of the region. So the Napa Valley is a, a, a really cool place. As you can see here, it's only about 25 miles long. It's two miles wide. Everyone thinks the Napa Valley is this huge place, you know, where all the wine from California comes from. But only, it's only about 4% of California wine comes from Napa. So it's a really small place, about a third the size of Burgundy, for example. You're now going to have the Rutherford, which is, in my opinion, the red wine that tastes the most like where we're sitting. Mm -hmm. And the whole Rutherford dusting, to me, just blows my mind. I close my eyes, I can sip it, and when I have it, I'm like, oh, if it's blind, I'm like, oh, I know where this is from. You know, that's what I smell in a great Rutherford Cabernet, is this distinct character of Rutherford dust. And, and he said that the tannins also, the feel in your mouth, should be like rubbing your hands across velvet backwards against the wow. nap, which I think is kind of a really a, a good way to think about it. So when I go out and choose the barrel for our most special wine, our Rutherford Cab, that's the image I have in my mind is the smell of Rutherford dust and this flavor on the tongue like rubbing your hands across velvet backwards. Pretty cool. From whatever region we visit, we're going to find out the true origins of the region, why the food is what it is, why the flavors are what they are the history in Napa, the Wapo Indians, and the story of the valley and everything else, and try to make a meal for you that actually represents what Napa is about with the wines from here, 100%. Here we are at Hudson Ranch in Napa Valley, where Lee Hudson is actually a landowner that has about, I think, 2,500 acres or so of all kinds of land divided between vineyards and farmland and grazing land for cattle. Govin and I are going to kind of look for some things to use for dinner tomorrow night in this kind of beautiful little ranch. There's a mushroom. Is a, well, we're not using that one, but yeah. there is mushrooms wandering around. I, I sometimes think of Napa as being an upside down Medoc, you know, the Bordeaux region, you know, because in, in Bordeaux you have the cooler regions at the north, you know, and, and the warmer regions like Graves at the south. But we're like the upside down part of that because our cool region is at the south end of the valley. Yeah, Calistoga. And, and Calistoga at the top of the valley is warmer. And so we're really a little, and, and because of this influence of the ocean. Rutherford is right in the center. And so I, I think of it as almost this tipping point in terms of the warm and cold, uh, you know, fog and no fog, so on and so forth. So it's, it, it builds a tension in the wines that I think is palpable. Yeah. So it looks uh, like what? Was that broccoli there? There's broccoli growing here. And actually, that's a different broccoli that didn't really take well. So this farm, mm -hmm. it's a, there's a lot of uh, experiments that go on here, meaning uh, mutated humans, no, not that. They actually, every year they try different things to plant whatever really does well. The following year they go ahead and replant it. Something like that broccoli that's not doing well, they'll plant something else in that spot next year. Across the way you have 100 acres of Zinfandel or something. And this really kind of shows the synergy of food and wine, <laughs> if you will. I mean, it, Yeah, it doesn't come together any closer. No, 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 no. This, right? Yeah, all kinds of peppers here. You're a man of heat, right? You oh, like yeah. some pepper from time to time? Oh, absolutely. We're going to play with some of this. These are albol here, aren't they? Or are these uh, poblanos? Those are poblano. Okay. Well, you got any fresher than that? That's kind of nice. Yeah. So is it fruit, or is it the winemaker? Is it technique, or what is it that you know creates some of the best wines? Yeah. Now you produced? you do some cooking, right? Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Every day. So is it an ingredient, or is it the chef, or is I knew it you were going to come <laughs> back and eat that one. Yeah. It's that. It's the combination. It, right, it's everything, right. and it's yeah, what I mean, you it, do with the fruit. It's, you're, yeah. you, there's no hope if you don't have great ingredients. Right. Right. Oh wow, look at that. Alright. Wanna taste? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that doesn't work the same way when I open a bottle of wine. Right. <laughs> but look at the color of that soil though. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so what do we got? We have uh... We got the chickens. Mm -hmm. We got the certified Angus beef standing rib roast. Is that what it's called? Yeah. All right. Uh, we got all the produce we really want. We got limes. We got Meyer lemons. We got some beets. We got the fennel. Mm -hmm. So we do like a really nice, we'll do a pie out of the chicken. Nice. Just the breast. Um, serve that with a, maybe like a Meyer lemon confit with a shaved fennel salad. Oh, we got the cauliflower. Mm -hmm. the, the cheddar cauliflower. We'll do that as one of the sides with the beef. Okay. Yeah. What about like the wings and stuff on the chicken? You want to like uh, yeah, shred them up and do some kind of a... Obviously. Um, and confit the legs as well. <sighs> All right, can we go look at a chicken? They wanted, they actually used to let the, the chickens run mm -hmm. on all the, cause he owns all this. Right. So they used to let the chickens roam and run around up here. And uh, they would come back and there'd be no chickens. Because mm -hmm. off the mountains on the other side, mm -hmm. they have um, hawks, buzzards, foxes, uh, mountain lions, all kinds of stuff. You're well, California. Every, every single predator that you can imagine, yeah. And they laid out a, and they had a buffet. We're gonna pick out some chicken for our dinner tomorrow night. What kind of um, chickens are they? They're called Freedom Rangers. Kind of a cross between a heritage breed and a production bird. Okay. So it, it has, you know, a lot of the, the pluses of a heritage breed. But they go like flavor wise a or? Bit yeah. Got it. Yeah. They're not known for their longevity. <laughs> no. 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 So what's their full lifespan till, you, till they hit the shelves? Ideally it's 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. They're really ugly. They certainly are. What the hell's on their faces? I wouldn't eat that. Not their faces anyway. How you doing? You ready for dinner? You're invited. Yeah, I guess who's coming to dinner? And then he has all the cows that just kind of wander. There's some there, but there's actually some right. See the cows over here? Yeah. Let's not let's not make anything that needs to be on YouTube, like getting chased by a cow and <laughs> assaulted by a red furry animal. How you doing? Hi. Hey. Oh, they got. Oh, it's a bull. Yeah. Yep. Is it, uh, how often do you work with certified Angus beef? Um, uh, quite a bit. You know, at all the restaurants we do incorporate good old CAB certified Angus beef. <clears throat> And um, yeah, it's just a real consistent product. So what are we what are we using from Napa? We have goat cheese. Well, starting at the top, yeah, yeah. I guess this beef originally came from here, right? right? So we're going to use that um, to make a little steak tartare for a starter on our and the farm eggs from here. Yep, exactly. Farm eggs right from Frog's Leap. Um, what else? The bread we're sourcing is going to be local stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, then our first salad is the um, beets that have been roasting in the oven. Perfectly done. Yeah, these are the golden beets. Yes, please. It's a little bit of um, olive oil. Got a little couple garlic cloves in there. A little bit of fresh thyme. Um, frog's leaf apples. Beets. Fennels from frog's leaf. And just about, just about everything we're incorporating is going to be from here. We had a tri-tip tacos for breakfast today. I left you some. It's fine. It's like the best right? thing. Anybody can put anything on the grill. <laughs> and they're a f***ing grill master. It's like whenever you, you know, who has the right mind, the right timing, to take it off. Dude, I will not get a, I will not get a grill master in a, in a second. Don't even question my grill skills. That bitch is perfect right now. Let's dry it up. Dry it up. Mm. I can smell it. <laughs> That's why. That shit went up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Walking slow. Yeah, you know that shit's burnt. Let's go look. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> look at that. If it was any more perfect, you know what it would be? It would be in freaking Tijuana. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's pretty food right there. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You see any? What's burnt? Well, mm. what, what, oh, uh. Well, it's like you don't want to cook tribe tip for like three hours though. It's already been out here too. Yeah, so what's another hour? Mm. Okay. <laughs> mm. Is it broken? It's good. It's 
a little bounce here, huh? <laughs> it's a little what? All right, we're, doing, we're doing five courses. You're doing five courses. Bubbly to start, that's out there. First course, mm -hmm. which is the salad with the beets and everything, mm -hmm. the blanc. Then we have the chicken with the chardonnay. Then mm -hmm. we have the meat with the bread. Yeah. Then we have dessert. Mm -hmm. How many is that? Five. So it's Hudson Ranch uh, chicken breast, and it's uh, served on a little bit of a short rib hash. So we braised a short rib, short rib for, what was it like, it must have been like six hours last night, late night braised. Yeah, we, we yeah. <laughs> good times. Uh, this is after coming to visit you, and you know, it was a long day, needless to say. Yeah, but we marinated them, grilled them off first, and then braised them for about six hours or so. Uh, pulled it this morning. Um, Refortified it with the juice that we braised it in, and then served that with the chicken that we marinated with a little bit of um, garlic, olive oil, and thyme. Right? Good man. What? <laughs> hey, pipe down. We're having we're having fun here, you know, it's Fabio. <laughs> so trying to bring that thought, that healthy thought process about the bigger picture into our farming system as well. And I think that that's where we're all gonna have to go. But I gotta get a better cow. That cow is, <laughs> isn't producing like I'd hope. No, right? <laughs> might be time, might be that day. You never yeah, know. That, yeah. So this is our lovely ribeye. Broken it down with this beautiful knife there, beautiful piece of steel. But we took <laughs> off the ribs. I removed the flap there, which I'll clean up in a little bit. We're gonna keep the bones. We're gonna just tie up this beautiful eye here. Marinate it real nicely, and then we're gonna roast this on top of the bones uh, with, on a little bed of herbs. Have some thyme, whatever we have from the garden there. Some onions will give it some really, really nice flavor. And it'll cook a lot faster, so. And when we take more joy in what we eat, we'll eat less, we'll consume less, we'll have mm -hmm. less issues in our environment, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, all important stuff. Yeah. yeah. Spread the word, Manny. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a skywriting over Napa Valley. So there you go. Eat gooder. Eat gooder. There you go. Try to spell it right, yeah. <laughs> Not eat gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this shit's warm you're in, enough. You're I'm like, in for I'm a hell of a dinner. Here. Everybody enjoy. Hey! Hey! hey. 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 Thank you. Thank you, guys. Salud. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, guys. I can see you in the pond in about 20 minutes, baby. Ah, pleasure. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Blake. There goes dinner. Oh, no. Did you get that on the <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Wow. How's that taste?